an iconic action star who almost dove his way into the Olympics, a live-in housekeeper with boxing in his past. A movie star's son hits the gridiron to escape his showbiz legacy but then becomes an actor anyway. These are the stories of famous actors who started out as athletes. After being drafted in 1991, Terry Crews spent five years as an NFL linebacker in Los Angeles, Washington, and San Diego, before ultimately calling it quits in 1997. He then struggled to make a living wage, so he swept floors to get by. With a graphic design background, acting wasn't exactly the logical choice for his next move. But clearly, it's worked out for him. Cruz started his film career with very small roles before breaking out in the 2002 comedy sequel Friday After Next. That led to the Expendables franchise and regular parts on TV shows like Everybody Hates Chris and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. He also has hosting experience, having emceed Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and America's Got Talent. And of course, how can we forget his series of over-the-top Old Spice commercials? This new Old Spice shaver is so amazing it'll shave off every hair on your face! Oh no! I'm a hair! On top of all that, Cruz is a published author as well. When his memoir, Tough, came out, he tweeted, I wrote this book for anyone who considers themselves tough but feels unfulfilled, who struggles with procrastination or self-sabotage, who is ready to achieve true, lasting self-mastery and strength. Jason Lee is surely best known as Earl Hickey, the lead character in the quirky NBC sitcom My Name is Earl. But before that, he'd established himself as a force to be reckoned with in the professional skateboarding world, according to the website for Stereo Sound Agency, which he co-founded in 1992. He rose to prominence in the late 80s and developed a roster of tricks that got him noticed by those in the know. That led to him starring in the film Video Days. He also spent time in Texas and focused on his work as a photographer, and during a good chunk of his career, he was an in-demand Hollywood hotshot. Lee's first substantial role was in the 1995 Kevin Smith film Mallrats, which was followed by several more collaborations with the director, including Chasing Amy, Dogma, and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Proving his versatility, Lee has also shown up as Dave in the four Alvin and the Chipmunks films, and in Oscar-caliber works such as Almost Famous and Vanilla Sky. And from 2010 to 2011, he he led the TNT dramedy Memphis Beat for two seasons. Unlike some of the others on this list, Kurt Russell's acting career has eclipsed his sports career to the point that hardly anybody even remembers the latter even existed. But once upon a time, he was on a very different path that may have led to the major leagues if not for an injury. As he revealed on Minor League Baseball's official website, for my family, baseball was a year-round thing. Acting was a business for me like it was for my dad. I made money, but I wanted to play baseball. That was the pursuit. Russell actually started as a child actor in 1962, and while he became a Disney star during that decade, he also continued to play ball. I used to play ping pong with Walt Disney. In the early 70s, Russell managed to play for a number of minor league organizations. But after his injury, he turned to acting full time, and it's gone pretty well for him since then. He has over 100 credits to his name on IMDb, including action fare like Tango and Cash, Backdraft, and Executive Decision. He's also starred in everything from comedies like Overboard to sports dramas like Miracle and superhero fare like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Like his father Kurt, Wyatt Russell is both an accomplished actor and athlete, but unlike his baseball-loving dad, his sport of choice is hockey, which he's played both domestically and abroad. He tended goal for a variety of junior teams, including the Brampton Capitals and Langley Hornets in Canada, as well as the Chicago Steel in the U.S. He also played college hockey at the University of Alabama in Huntsville, and he even did a one-season stint for a team in the Netherlands. Like many pro athletes, injuries cut Russell's career short, and after retiring in 2010, he took after his family and decided to break into showbiz. He showed up in an episode of the short-lived Law & Order LA, and then gained further notice as a flirty hockey player in the Judd Apatow-directed This Is 40. He followed that up with more small film roles and TV guest spots, before landing a leading role in the quirky dramedy Lodge 49, which aired on AMC for two seasons from 2018 to 2019. His career then reached never-before-seen heights in 2021, when he followed his dad's lead and joined the MCU for the Disney Plus miniseries The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Wow, Captain America is bearded now. Yeah, very, extremely. Yeah. It's not terribly surprising that John Cena went from pro wrestler to one of the biggest action movie stars in the world, but what is surprising is that he did so with stellar comedic chops. Way back before all that happened, he was reportedly homeless prior to his grappling career, which began when he became affiliated with Ultimate Pro Wrestling and then exploded after he made his WWE SmackDown debut in 2002. 
Cena's acting career kicked off with WWE-produced films like The Marine, 12 Rounds, and Legendary. Then his big breakthrough came in, of all things, the 2015 rom-com Trainwreck, which was followed by the similarly silly sisters and a cameo in Daddy's Home. He then ventured back to his action roots with The Wall, but found more success as an overprotective dad in Blockers. He continued rolling along into the Fast and Furious franchise, as well as hosting the 2021 reboot of Wipeout. Also in 2021, he shared some inspiring words when he tweeted, When the opportunity for adventure presents itself, find the line where values aren't compromised and the diem is fully carpeed. Footage of Jason Statham diving has been making the rounds on the internet for years by now, and yet many fans still don't know about his athletic past. He competed as a diver at the Commonwealth Games in 1990, although he failed to medal in any of his three events. He never competed in any Olympics, though he was reportedly once ranked 12th in the world for diving on the platform. But as he revealed to IGN in 2012, diving wasn't exactly lucrative, so he sold pottery on the streets of London to get by. Nevertheless, he spent a dozen years on the British national team, and it was during training that he was noticed by a modeling scout. A French connection campaign led to a fateful introduction to filmmaker Guy Ritchie, who then cast Statham in 1998's Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Statham's film career really blossomed from there, and he now has over 50 acting credits to his name, including a few other Ritchie films. Like many athletes turned actors, he's mostly known for his action movies, including The Transporter and Crank Flicks, as well as a few entries in the Fast and Furious series. He's also shown his knack for comedy, as was abundantly clear in 2015 Spy. I've jumped from a high-rise building, using only a raincoat as a parachute, and broke both legs upon landing. Tony Danza has been lighting up screens for more than four decades now, so you can be forgiven if you forgot, or never even knew, that he was previously a collegiate wrestler, and that he also spent three years as a professional boxer before skyrocketing to fame on the sitcom Taxi. A year after that show ended, he began playing his most iconic character, housekeeper Tony Maselli, on ABC's Who's the Boss? That show ran for eight seasons and earned Danza three Golden Globe nominations. In addition to those two iconic series, Danza has been a regular on a number of other programs, including Family Law and, naturally enough, The Tony Danza Show. Additionally, he hosted a daytime talk show for two years in the 2000s that was also called The Tony Danza Show. His film appearances include the likes of Angels in the Outfield, Crash, and Don John. On top of all that, he has numerous stage credits, and he's written both a memoir and a cookbook. It seems like nearly every big-name wrestler has at least dabbled in acting, but only a handful have actually become giant movie stars. Dave Bautista is one of the lucky few, and his involvement with the Marvel Cinematic Universe all but ensures that he'll be busy for years, if not decades, to come. He's appeared as Drax the Destroyer in four films, beginning with 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy, with more already on the calendar for 2022 and 2023. Before he hit it big with acting, Batista was huge among wrestling fans, some of whom had been following his career even before he began in the WWE in 2002, as he got his start with Ohio Valley Wrestling. In 2010, he left wrestling for acting full-time, although he's returned to the ring a couple times, and he also had a brief run doing mixed martial arts in 2012. His breakthrough movie gig was 2012's The Man with the Iron Fists, He's since shown up in giant box office hits like Spectre, Blade Runner 2049, and Dune. He's also branched out in smaller fare like Bushwick and comedies like Stuber and My Spy. He has many upcoming projects on the horizon, including the much-anticipated Knives Out sequel. When he was a child, John David Washington had some cameos in a couple of his father Denzel's films. But his original career plan was athletics. He took up football at least partially to distance himself from his famous dad, and once told Sports Illustrated, When I saw that it was about me and not my father, it was like a drug. I got addicted to that, to being able to be appreciated, separate, independently of a name. Washington was good enough to play college ball at Morehouse, and was even signed to the St. Louis Rams at one point, though he never made it off the practice squad. He also played in the United Football League, and when that ended, he was hoping for a second shot at the NFL. But alas, an injury prevented that from happening. Once football was officially off the table, Washington was approached by an old friend turned agent who recruited him for a main role in the sports-centric HBO series Ballers, which lasted for five seasons. He then made his way to the silver screen, as he broke out in 2018's biopic Black Klansman, which was directed by his dad's frequent collaborator Spike Lee. His other film credits include action flick Tenet, legal drama Monster, and domestic drama Malcolm and Marie. 
He's set to make his Broadway debut in September 2022 in August Wilson's The Piano Lesson. Though commercial wrestling lacks the prestige of other professional sports, it lends itself especially well to theatrics. It combines the power, flexibility, and competitiveness of athletics with the entertainment of Hollywood, and the result has been lucrative for many wrestlers turned actors. But very few of them have had the success of the exceptionally charming and handsome Dwayne Johnson. A third-generation wrestler with dashed dreams of being a pro football player, he debuted in the WWF in 1996, but it wasn't until the following year that he became The Rock, though The Rock started off as a villain. Johnson himself has become absolutely beloved in the decades since. He made his film debut in 2001's The Mummy Returns, which quickly led to a spin-off focused on his character, The Scorpion King. He left the WWE in 2004, although he would later return. Nowadays, he's one of the highest-paid movie stars in the world. He stars in a TV show based on his life, and he's shown up in massive franchises like Fast and Furious and Jumanji. His other box office hits, just to name a few, include the likes of Central Intelligence, Skyscraper, and Rampage. To put it another way, now there's pretty much nobody on the planet who can't smell what The Rock is cooking. If you smell what The Rock is cooking! Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.